Hi. On Sunday's roundtable, we focused on the ratings drop and its implications for the show's future. Here we go. In a matter of a week, we've gone from 2.6 million down to 2.04 million. Now, that is stark. It is because it's 20% of the viewing platform has gone. And whether they think there's a fantastic uptake on streaming, I'll show you in a moment. The uptake apparently is 150,000 people. So it's not happening. And so you can see, um, if I just make it larger for a second, you can see what the issue is here. At Christmas and the three specials, we've well over halved. Or in some cases, you could argue it's a third of the overnights. So, you know, what, what's going on here? What does everybody reckon? This can't be what they were planning. This can't be what the, the issue was, John. Does these figures surprise you, John? Uh Yes and no. Uh, they don't surprise me. It's a very hot weekend, and it was a very hot weekend last weekend also. And lots of people, because we don't see the sun often in this country, uh, when, when it is sunny, people tend not to watch television. They stay outside in the gardens. Last night, I didn't watch Doctor Who when it was broadcast. I, I, I watched it the afternoon preceding after because it was on iPlayer. So I wouldn't have included those figures, and I dare say a whole lot of other people wouldn't have either. So I, I, I'm not leaping to the defence of this and I'm not playing BBC PR department here. I'm just saying some of the extraneous factors which compensate for this. So we are in the summer now in the Northern Hemisphere. It's been good weather in the United Kingdom, so that might explain some of this. But what you can't explain is, and that's why the other side of this is, you can't explain, you're right, Brendan, 20% down on the initial figures. from. So some people are looking at this and they're voting with the remote controls and deciding this is not for me. So if I was a BBC, uh, Bad Wolf or Disney executive producer, one of the 100,000 executive producers that apparently are in this programme, then I, I would be getting a little bit concerned whether that is because they've been bludgeoned with the message, whether that's they don't like the new Doctor, whether or not the first two episodes were just too light and frothy for them. I don't know. It may be a variety of all of these things. But nonetheless, yes, I would imagine in BBC Towers, in Disney Towers and elsewhere, there will be a slight free song of panic. I mean, Gary, um, just for, so you know, uh, uh, regarding how, how it was in Britain, because obviously these figures are still kind of isolated. So here's some context. The 2.04 million last night in, in, in Britain was up against Britain's Got Talent, which got 4.1 million. So double that. And also on uh, ITV was uh, 1% Club, which is another one of those quiz shows. That was 3.58 million. The ITV News got 2.2 million. So Doctor Who was in fourth place and was fighting to get its audience share up. And that's the big launch, Gary. Well, um, I agree with a lot of what uh, uh, John was saying. Uh, clearly, uh, the show... And this is basically, it's three episodes, but if you think about it, it's just from one week to the next. And if you look from the very beginning uh, of episode one to episode three, it's lost, what, 600,000 viewers in just effectively one week. And so, I mean, it can't be denied, the, the show is, you know, continuing uh, to hemorrhage viewers. And I think that, you know, fans, not just fans, but uh general tv watchers who who tune into the show just want well-written science fiction stories good effects stories that are true to the legacy of the show that aren't suffocated with all this ideology but you know normally the way these things worked is that the ratings of one week will reflect people's satisfaction or lack of same with what they saw the previous week so I think that a lot of this drop can be uh, counted to people's dissatisfaction with the first two episodes. And a lot of people, uh, you know, are, are ticking over to the idea of, well, iPlayer will solve everything, it'll be fine. But as you yourself just said, Brendan, uh, it was only a matter of about 150, in the 18 hours between the start between its debut on iPlayer and the actual terrestrial broadcast, yeah. um, I think it was only around 150,000. So the first episode, the Space Babies went 
from 2.6 to 2.69, so not even you know a full point uptick. Season episode two went from 2.4 to 2.54, so that was more. But the thing about it is, is that I, I think these overnights they try to dismiss, but that really is the key indication of how well this product is resonating with the British public because. For the most part, I think all of the really dedicated Doctor Who fans, the fans who will watch Doctor Who or anything labeled Doctor Who, no matter what the quality is, will have watched it in that 18 hours between that. They will not have waited, you know, 18 hours to watch it on terrestrial if they didn't have to. So I think that this, it can't be denied that this is a clear indication of of how this is resonating with the general public. And, and, and well, you would, this is surely not where anybody wants to be after three episodes in two weeks and a big launch. That's the thing. I mean, Hugh, are these figures surprising you? I was asking the thread a moment ago, can anyone see any valid reasons? I mean, we've heard one from John about, you know, the British weather, for example, that has been used by the BBC already. Um, but it can only go so far, of course, some of these uh, ideas. I mean, why would you schedule the whole blooming Doctor Who launch for British summertime if that's the case? Well, I mean, presumably, originally we weren't meant to be British summertime. We were meant to be March, mm -hmm. weren't we? And yes. then it got delayed for, for various reasons. And I think that that's a much more sensible time to launch it. And, and though you could launch it in May, and it, and it might have been raining for these entire two weeks it's quite perfectly possible I, I i think the thing one of the things was i looked at the bbc schedules last night and, and they are dire yes um yeah. in, in terms of that so it's not got anything to sort of like run into and, and obviously in terms of the the itv stuff i think that's they've won the night and i think doctor who is a show that can help out another show but needs help itself in terms of, of, of getting that in and it doesn't have that so and, I, and that may also be that the plan if the plan was originally in march that there might have been something stronger to be honest i very rarely watch live television so uh, i wouldn't be able to tell you what was on bbc in march but uh yeah i, I it's it's just not good news i think I, the, the the drop if, if you're running around 2.6 million, maybe that, that's okay now with the streaming or whatever, but the drop is the drops the worry. Yeah, and, and, and the, you know, the thread, I mean, there is a frustration out there, people saying, oh, wait, don't buy into that argument about the weather. Blah, blah, blah. The thing is, it's going to be a multitude of reasons, but I have to say I'm not buying it either because if I go here, for example, the worst episode of Doctor Who before last night was Legend of the Sea Devils which was shown, correct me if I was wrong, was not May Bank Holiday, and that got 2.2 .2 million. And as Gary sent, and we mentioned in our thread last week, didn't we, um, in our show stream last week, there were loads of episodes. I mean, I have to say, RTD's seasons have normally been March through to June. And so a lot of his seasons, when they were successful, have actually faced the same problems of British summer, uh, various other things, but they've managed to hit bigger figures. Now, yeah, streaming but... has come on board, yeah. but Legend of the Sea Devils isn't that long ago, and that got 2.2. .2. Then yeah. Power of the Doctor, 3.7. Yeah, hold on. Can I butt in? Go on, go on. Can I, yeah, thanks, Kate. Just, just butt in slightly. Uh, the solace the BBC can take from this, however, is that Doctor Who was the most popular programme on BBC One last night. Now, Hugh's quite right, it had, it had no competition. The, the schedule was absolutely dire. It's just a collection of game shows, one, not very good game shows of that, one after another, ho hosted by a, a parade of non-entities. Uh, so it's, it's absolutely dreadful. However, on the other side, you have, in, in mitigation of these figures, uh, you have Britain's Got Talent, which is one of the behemoth, behemoths of, 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 uh, of British uh, uh, rating success, which itself now is down to 4 million, when it was getting 16, 17, 18 million only a few years ago. So we can't underestimate the significance of how linear television has, has fallen significantly. So I think the bigger picture to look at, Brendan, is not the, the, the 2 point million. It's the drop between the initial episode and where we are now. I think that's the big... T 
telling thing here. It's not maintaining an audience, it's losing an audience. And just to remind people, and obviously I'll come to you, Michelle, but Michelle, I did, you know, and, and, and I'll thank Gary Lee, for example. Uh, there's a few bits I've got from Gary Lee, but basically um, Gary Lee, uh, and you can find him on Facebook, he's, he's looked at a lot of this behind the figures. Every five minutes, you can see for episode one, it started at 2.65 million and actually finished at 2.5. But the drop off from the end of Space Babies to Devil's Cord was 470,000. And it didn't really pick up. And you can see in the last 10 minutes when everybody's tuning in ready for Eurovision, yeah. you can see <laughs> then it picks up. And of course, it is a bit later in the night time. But it gets up to seven million at eight fifteen. So the argument, if the BBC really want to go to town on this, <laughs> what it was, it was, you know, it was five more million people were outside um, at seven o'clock to eight o'clock. I mean, you know, yeah, you'd lose a degree. That's it's not too much. So Michelle, you know, are, are these figures concerning you because you are a Doctor Who fan? Well, yeah. I mean, to be honest, it, it is concerning. I'm. I'm really on the fence. I've always been on the fence about the ratings issue. Um, again, it has been streaming well, at least the first week. We'll see how it goes into the second week on uh, Disney Plus. And, and it has been streaming generally well around around the world. Um, uh, so that's, let me get this, there we go. Um, so that's another thing. Um, but also this has had Probably one of the worst marketing campaigns in Doctor Who history. Do you think? Because you would. Sorry, I'll let you come back in. Of course, I will, Michelle. But you've been telling me, and so have other people in America, that the marketing in New York, LA, and you were seeing things you hadn't seen before. I remember you texted me the other day. I thought you thought the marketing was even better. The marketing of seeing and knowing about the show is good. Is I'm saying is what the actors and the people involved are saying. Right. Go when ahead. you do have an actor telling people to go out and touch grass and to not watch it. Yeah. This idea lately, and we're seeing it even with the Snow White movie uh, that may or may never ever come out, is <laughs> you, the actors involved should not be insulting the audience. And a lot of people are like, you'll, you'll see the touch grass um, uh, uh, insult being used now of, uh, you know, I'm going to go outside and touch grass versus watching Doctor Who. Uh, so this has been uh, poorly done on the marketing aspect of it, of what the actors are saying. Instead of talking about the show, they're, they're, we're getting as mired down and these things that we really shouldn't be talking I mean, about. I mean, Michelle, just to add to yours and ask you, I mean, Mr. Wicky, I've just flashed it up, but Mr. Wick says, I mean, I got the three puppets on. I, I, We did Haiti, the maestro, and then we had the representation of a classic Doctor Who fan who says it's not it's not being marketed at me, it's not for me. And as you're saying... It is being marketed towards younger people. I mean, this is coming... Up, I mean, now, they keep saying this is the TikTok doctor. So let me just show everybody this then, uh, which is a breakdown again by Gary Lee. Uh, so, um, yeah got it here so if i just i'll go big screen first to help everybody out but you will see um that breakdown wise out of, this is for space babies One hundred and forty thousand of the 2.6 million were four to 15 year olds Three hundred and forty-six thousand of that 2.6 million were 16 to 34s so by working <laughs> If, if you really look at who our target audience are and what he's actually and who's actually watching the blooming thing, you've actually got the 82% of the total audience for Space Babies was 35 or over. Yeah. Yeah. And then for Devil's Cord, again, you had 77% of the audience, 1.8 of the million. So basically, you know, the marketing, Michelle, it was pitching at that, but it's missing them completely. But it's yeah, that's, 70, that's seventy-seven percent of the ones that Shooty's calling gamins and tell them to go outside and touch grass. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. It's poorly really marketed. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Cinnamon, your Generation Z, and we'll be doing our uh, bi-generates at uh, midday tomorrow live. So please, those in Australia and America, particularly who find that time helps, we'll be doing a live discussion at midday tomorrow now your generation is ed so of course has the marketing Important. been done to you have are you you know has it been grabbing you and has it delivered yes and no i, I agree mm -hmm. with 
<laughs> Everyone's made some really good points. I've been listening to everybody, and I agree with John. I agree with Gary. I think Michelle's made some great points, and I think everyone's right. And I focus on the whole thing about the ratings. I focus on it, but I don't. Obviously, it's been brought up on the stream, so I'm naturally going to talk about it. But I don't go on my way because it's too... It's too many different factors. There's way too many different variables that impact it. There's so many. I mean, I'm, I, was, I was never that great with numbers, but it, it, this isn't, for me, I tend to focus more on the, you know, is it a good story? Yes, no. Has it got message in it? Is it woke? Yes, no. The more things that are more debatable. Whereas with this, it's not really my area. Um, it's too, okay, it's, it's too many factors, too many variables. Um, but without, sound, without repeating myself, I'll tackle the issue I've done anyway. Um, well, no, yeah. Just, 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 just a, a quick one. Wouldn't the people who are most likely to watch on streaming be those age groups? And, what, and like that's, my age. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, that, and that's when, if I show uh, well, you. But if, I show, if I just show you this for a second, then I just, just to bring everything in, you can see at the top there in a shock revelation, Gallifrey based ratings analyst Andy Parrish has disclosed to members that Space Babies and Devil's Card were each seen on the iPlayer less than 150,000 times between dropping at midnight on Friday and 18 hours later when it was transmitted on BBC One. So the myth that people have been holding on to that yes, Generation Z and the younger ones will all be up there at midnight watching and the figures, oh, that surprise figure is going to boost the overall figures. Well, we're running out of examples of what's left. Um, now, yeah, Simon, yeah, I'm, but I'm, 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 more, I'm more thinking that it will just be streamed. And it will, I, I don't think that there is the excitement in Generation Z or whatever to go, let's watch it at midnight. I think that tends to be people who are um, of an older generation who are doing stuff on YouTube podcasts. Who yeah, <laughs> watch it, 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 it live. Um, well, yes, well, some people are watching them doing live streams. I can't wait. I can't wait. I don't want to wait until it's restored to TV. So I, I, yeah. I have to Brent, be Brendan, to you're a you remember Brendan how RTD was getting out there and telling everybody to have uh, live par watch parties? Yeah. Yep, and yep. to get everybody to get it. Maybe that's the reason the ratings were so low, is because there were so many of these big watch parties that were going <laughs> on where you had hundreds of people in one room just watching <laughs> one television. That, uh, that uh, kind of explains things. It's like there were actually thousands more people watching it, but they were all watching it from like four or five TVs. And Gary, and Gary, not them. only that, but apparently they're all watching it in old people's care homes because it seems to be those are the only people who are watching it. The older generation, while the rest are out, TikToking? Is that what is that? TikToking. Yeah. Yeah. One uh, one thing about one thing about the 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 weather factor or non factor. Please correct me if I'm wrong. It doesn't seem to me that if the weather is a factor, that that's going to affect all the shows on all the channels. Yeah. So if that can that can explain. They would say, well, Doctor Who was still number one, but even though the numbers were lower because the viewing across the board was lower for everything, but Doctor was still number one, whatever. But in this case, last night. You had it was number four uh, after Strictly Come Dancing, a game show, and the news. Uh, yeah, Britain's, yeah, yeah. That people Brent, Brent's still. Got talks, but they're, they're, they're all on one channel. So. Who was number one for the BBC last year? BBC. Time. Oh, okay. And then right. um, currently on Disney Plus right now in the United States is at number seven. It's the um, first like adult live action show on the listing ahead of it. Everything else is like Bluey and The Simpsons and right. X Men ninety seven. What were on the other channels in Haiti? That's what I want to. Well, obviously, are there any other channels in Haiti at the moment? Maybe that's the only one. Thing you, you. That's why it's number one. <laughs> this is, I'm make fun of this Haiti's is, for liking it. I mean, it is what it is. There's something, something striking a chord there. I'm not going to be well, elitist and saying just because it's in one country over another. No, no, they would they would have watched last night because they would have seen it as a documentary for their lives. Excuse me, oh, Brendan. No. Brendan, no. Brendan I'm, I'm going to call in the heat, please. I'm sure you're upskirting with one way there. I made sure I was upskirting. I mean, <laughs> that one, the previous one, that one. 
Shot well, the she was doing exactly what RTD and Shooty had told them to do if you don't like the programme. And, and yet that seems to be most of the yeah, blooming audience it, because, it? yeah, I think it is really important, though, to, for us to actually just remind ourselves of this, that as, as Michelle pointed out on the marketing front, they have really gone heavy on the marketing for the younger market. And yet... Mm -hmm. The older ones who, yes, we might not like the bi generation or there might be certain aspects of the plot or canon that we might challenge. We may not. I know a lot of people who are also my age who love how this Doctor Who iteration has been presented. But the thing is, overall, the figures seem to be saying you've challenged the product, you've changed the product mm -hmm. because you're trying to pitch it younger and those younger ones are not watching this is a disaster, really, of marketing, as you said, my, Michelle. Yeah, I mean, there's it's been very mixed signaled, and I'm and this is not just something that has been a Doctor Who issue. You're seeing it everywhere. We're seeing it in Rings of Power. We saw it in the um, Han Solo show, another Han Solo show. Well, whatever the guy running around the desert, the, the Star Wars issue. Um, we've also seen it on other other issues. Um, even um, the first season of the uh, Game of Thrones, uh, House of the Dragons had some mixed marketing issues. Uh, so this is kind of an em emblematic of Hollywood in general that nobody seems to know how to market without blanking off your audience. Now, just to, just to kind of uh, throw a few things in here, because as you know, on our show, we obviously will be reviewing um, and we look at certain criteria, but just to bring in this discussion of the debate uh, and, and where it is at the moment, <laughs> this is what we've been judging so far. That's our panel's judgment. And so you've got boom at the top, and um, we'll go over why. Space Babies, we reckon, needed improvement overall, although our panel was split. That's why I've got six on. The Devil's Cord, I've changed it from special measures to it's in oblivion. Now, what's fascinating about this <laughs> is the, the devil's cord one was the one that our panel and that was a mixture of people um was seen as the kind of marmite one space babies wasn't seen as overall good but it was seen as lighter on that one however that's the one where everybody dropped off can anybody think honestly when you think of what was going on last week and what was being watched What's really put people off Doctor Who? You can't just say the marketing. There's a lot of people have said in the thread, there's content, there's characterization. You know, we, we go on, Cinnamon. I think it's, well, I think a big part of it comes down to certain, choice, certain choices that are being made, certain words that are being spoken. Um, and again, just on the, on the thing, I think just TV in general is just not what it was. You know, it, it's not, Saturdays just don't have that big, you know. I mean, I, you know, as a younger person, I never really watched that much TV as a kid. But no, even I remember like it being a bigger occasion, you know. And and they celebrate these little milestones. You'll hear Julie, you know, Gardner, Jane trying to come out on an interview and say, "Oh, well, it was top one in this particular guy." You know, no spin, and that's the thing with. Yeah. You know, I heard it said before, uh, statistics and, and fact, our numbers are the big are the uh, are the beginning of a conversation, not the end. Um. And it's just, you know, it, it's like if Tyson Fury was to get in a ring with a 10 year old and then boast about, you know, being, oh, I'm the champion and I'm on the winner. Well, yeah, but there was nothing, there was no competition. Again, apart from Doctor Who, what else is yeah. on there now? You know, again, Bless her, Julie Gardner. A few games show and what have Julie Gardner for Bad Wolf said, didn't she, in an interview with the LA Times and various publications as part of Bad Wolf, she said, we are trying to get Doctor Who to reach every corner of the planet to be bigger, better, broader in reach. That's why they were happy to talk to Disney. It's not happening. This is what I mean. It, it, it's not working. And in the end, I just feel as though, and I'm, I, I'm a Doctor Who fan. I have to keep reminding myself of that. I have to say this out loud in case anybody thinks we just like to have digs. We are not a channel that likes to do digs. I'm mortified. I'm dismayed that we're in this position after two weeks and three episodes. But by the way, three specials, a Christmas show, and three other RTD, uh, sorry, uh, under RTD's reign, we've now had seven episodes. It's limping. It's, it's, no, but it's going down all the time. I mean, yeah. the, 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 it, it, the, 
it's going down. It's not. Uh, it held up a bit over the specials and and, and Christmas and Christmas is a bit of an odd one anyway. But we're now getting the reaction. Again, I think the five months delay after it meant that it went quiet and then it's not even marketing. It's just not a consistent message. You can't say this isn't for you and expect people to watch it. You can't do you can't do the, the, the amount of politics that to me are just now they are my politics, but I don't want I don't want them hit all the time. No. I, I, I honestly do not want anything about an abortion pro or anti in Doctor Who. It's not what it's about. Yeah, we are going to this is, Brendan, this is well, why that, the chart. Go on, Gary. I was going to say this is why the chart that you have up is so enlightening because it shows that throughout. I mean, I know that's just for well, no, it's for both. That throughout the course of the episode, at these little five-minute intervals, it shows that people were actively turning out. It wasn't now the thing with Disney Plus, at least even especially for the double header there. If you just leave it on, I, I think it probably works the same way over in the UK as it does over here. If you just leave it on after episode one and you go off and you, you know, yeah, yeah. start paying bills or calling somebody on the phone, it's going to just tick over to the next episode automatically, mm -hmm. right? And the numbers will stay the same. So to me, what these numbers show, Brendan, that you have up is that people were not just, you know, leaving it on and letting it kind of run as background noise. They were actively kind of like voting with their remote and actually clicking off in these numbers at all of these intervals in kind of a fairly constant way all throughout the episodes. And to me, what it comes down with, audiences know that, especially with so much choice these days, audiences know that if you're not entertaining them, you're wasting their time. And they're gonna, they're gonna vote with their remote and go find something else, which is what's happening. And what's true, and, and, and I remember talking to John about this uh, probably just uh, last Sunday's stream when, you know, because John, you were one of those viewers who you watched Space Babies, but you didn't really want to do a double bill, then the Eurovision, it was just too much. So you said you watched Space Babies. And so that kind of made sense to me that the second figure dropped down. The trouble is the third figure, which is for this week, it doesn't pick up. Yeah, I, th I think it's fairly obvious that this is a show having difficulty connecting, whether it's with the, with, with the British audience or the, the general worldwide audience, Haiti accepted uh, on that score. So if I was sitting in Bad Wolf Towers, I, I, I would be worried about this. I, I am sure that we'll have the spin. We will be told the weather thing, like I mentioned too, and that's played a small part, absolutely has. Uh, but generally speaking, this was Doctor Who's massive relaunch. They yeah. trumpeted the fact that they had Tenet, Tenet and uh, Tate returning, uh, a new doctor, uh, the return of Russell T. Davis, who was back in a capable pair of hands. It was so was on this. And then, although I enjoyed Space Babies, at the latter end, it, I, I still say it was a fairly, still bog standard episode of Doctor Who, it would never be on my big rewatch list, but it was better than anything that Chris Chibble had served up to us in terms of you know, the, the highs and lows that we got throughout of it. But I'd imagine if you're trying to gain an audience or regain an existing audience in the United Kingdom and you feed them that, they might just as well go, you know what, not for me. I can understand that point of view. And I think there's a huge element of that. I will be very interested that with the 2.6 or 2.06 who watched Boom, because it was better than what we had before, perhaps more traditionally Doctor Who in terms of its content, whether or not there will be an upswing which proves that this trend could be slightly reversed. If it doesn't, this show's in big trouble. Yeah, and I, re I remember what it's been. The choices again, the choice that are being made, again, you know, we, we understand the reasons why it's delayed, the, the whole VFX Russell's explained in Doctor Who magazine. But notwithstanding that, I think that still cost it. Whether it's whether okay, there might be a good excuse behind it, but it still cost it because I think there was a long gap, wasn't there? Really, when you think, oh, I mean, yeah, a couple of months isn't forever. I get that, but you know, for for a TV I, show, 
the, if they, the way they did it, if it was, you know, after the end of time, you know, only a couple of months later, April, we went straight into the Matt Smith era. We had the Christmas episode. You know, we had the 60th. We had the episode where they brought everyone back because, you know, that's what everyone's doing now. Everyone's, oh, go, let's go and get the old viewers back, which people did. Oh, look, it's David Tennant again. Oh, it's Scott Oh, oh hello, oh, hello, Dylan. You haven't watched the show since you were a kid. Let's all watch it again. So they get, they get the old audience back and then tell them to go away again. So there's mixed message in there. You know, then they have the mm. new Doctor, the new episode. Um, and then they have silence for nothing but months. And then we have certain interviews, which are very, very questionable. And then you get this. Yes. So unfortunately, there's been a lot of water under that bridge. Yeah. And you know, it's and really cinnamon. Quite the momentum sorry, sorry, Graham, we just went on that point. Yes. What cinnamon looks like? He's absolutely spot on. When viewers desert your program, they're based on the instructions you've given them. If you don't yep. like it, go away. Is it yep. any wonder twenty percent of the viewing viewership of this program has gone? They're and only acting on instructions. And this is why, and um, when Cinnamon said earlier, because uh, as a Generation Z, I know you don't represent the whole planet of Generation Z, yeah. but you represent you. And what you said was, you don't quite know why we're obsessing about the figures. So, in some ways, but the truth is, we're all from an era, Cinnamon, when the show was axed, the show was rested because of the figures. Five million. Yeah, yeah, and and so yeah. we're very aware that you have to keep an eye on the ratings. You have to keep an eye on. Is it popular enough oh, yeah. to oh, yeah. sustain? And we all know that, um, I mean, there's two things to say about Disney, Gary. The timeout, I've never heard of this, but the Disney timeouts, and um, one of our thread was talking about it, and I had I had seen a program about it on another YouTube stream where the timeouts for Disney, there's no pattern. People are falling out of Doctor Who throughout the episodes. There's no one key scene that's killing it. The whole program's killing it. And on top of that, Gary... We understand from certain streams and from certain publications out there that Disney might be in the next what month or two discussing whether they're going to uptake Doctor Who for later. Well, the thing about it is, is I mean, obviously, as as you've discussed many times on on the channel, you know, they've they booked two seasons. That's why they're filming both seasons at once. But I mean, you can't deny the fact that this was, in terms of overnights, this was the lowest rated. Doctor Who episode in history. Yeah. Um, and uh, as was just mentioned, you know, when the show was rested in 1989, uh, it was still getting more than twice these figures. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, I saw, I saw a, a, what I thought was a great, a succinct but very well made point in a chat this week. Somebody said, this is no longer appointment television, it's disappointment television. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, I can't, you know, you can't really argue with that. And the thing about it is, if somebody, if somebody tunes out at the beginning of a show, like after five minutes, 10 minutes, and says, this isn't just for me, they're not going to tune back in like 30 minutes later and say, well, let no. me just check in to see if this episode's gotten better. They're out for that episode. So if you lose the, anybody at any point in the episode, they're not all of a sudden going to be, you know what, I think I might give it another try before the yep. end and see if maybe I was wrong. No, people make those instant and, and decisions this, and stick to it. And this is this is the double-pronged attack that's gone so wrong, isn't it? That as, as a lot of you have been saying, we've had hostile marketing to our generation in particular, not cinnamon, um, so hostile marketing, telling us we can take or leave it, but it's not for us anymore. And then on top of that, when we actually digest the program, we're not overall, but we'll have disagreements on this panel tonight. I know we will about boom and we're going to come to it. But but not enough of our generation are actually consuming it and unhappy with it. So with that pincer movement you are losing people because if you're hostile to them as you say gary i'm not going to turn up next week i mean i've got a program this week we're going to do a sense for your saloon special on friday where i'm interviewing one of my former panelists because he is leaving he's not watching doctor who anymore he's out of doctor who because of how it's been presented and how he's been spoken to. So, you know, tune in on that one on Friday, Sense for your, uh, live talk with one of my lost panelists now because of this iteration. Anyway. Well, Brendan, here's a question, and I don't know, maybe it's still too early for this, 
is is it a possibility that if these if the if the if the trajectory holds and um, that there's a possibility if it goes under then you're saying well where will this be by the season's end in five weeks well if they've already lost more than half a million in one week effectively um you know where will it be in five weeks could it be hovering around even one million by uh the time and then the question becomes well is it could it be a possibility that it at some point becomes a streaming only show yeah that if I they think. rely if they rely just on streaming numbers uh then the bbc says well as much as doctor who's been an institution we can't justify putting this on if there's only 1.1 or 1.2 million watching each week um could it could it just could they just dump it you know dump it on to streaming everything no sorry I was about to say that as Gary was saying that everything on BBC, the linear channel, BBC One and BBC Two, also plays simultaneously on BBC iPlayer. So uh, you can either view it on your television set or you can view it via your phone, your laptop, your computer, wh wh whatever it is. The BBC are actively encouraging people to go to iPlayer as a means of transition between sort of linear television and, and, and where we are we are now. Uh, in, in terms of whether or not they would take it off air, because of the licensee, they can't do that. If mm -hmm. licensee money is contributing okay. to this, they have to show it on a BBC channel uh, in addition to BBC iPlayer. So uh, that's not going to happen. But ultimately, I think for the BBC, the, B the BBC's future will it will just end up as a, a streaming service, no doubt, uh, in the longer term through through iPlayer or whatever it is they choose to call it at that point. Join us. For more big roundtable discussions on Sundays and Wednesdays, look out for more videos throughout the week. I have my saloons, my saloon live on Fridays. And remember to like, share and subscribe and click on your notifications. Do us a favour. Cheers. Bye for now.